Welcome to the Attractive Man Podcast, where we help men become better men. In these episodes, you'll discover how to improve your dating and relationships, how to break through your mental limits that are holding you back, and how to move through life with confidence and purpose. And our special guest today, somebody who has inspired and taught me so much about the beautiful mystery of feminine energy, uh, Zen Perion author of The Alabaster Girl, to which I have a copy of right here, and I pretty much bring it with me everywhere in the world, and we'll talk about that. Um, Zen, welcome to the show. Uh, It's really awesome to have you on. Well, thank you, guys. Happy to be here. I discovered you first from uh, YouTube uh, when Brian Beijing interviewed you, and as soon as I saw that interview, I I bought your book, and I gotta say, it's, it's the most inspiring book that I've ever read on the topic of seduction. Now guys, if you haven't heard of Zamperion, he's not a pickup artist. Um, he's the furthest away possible that you could possibly be in this realm from somebody you would call a pickup artist. He teaches seduction, which uh, is a dirty word these days, like, like he mentions <laughs> yeah. in his book. Um, but it's really the most beautiful way to interact with the opposite sex and really uh, learn and understand and experience beauty. Zen, first I, I, wanna, I wanna tell the audience um, that you weren't a ladies man coming out of the womb. No, not at all. You had quite a, an interesting uh, journey into becoming the man that you are today. So would you be so kind to share with us uh, a little bit of your story on the come up? I grew up in northern Canada, basically in the forest. Um, I, I, my, my formal education ended at 13 years old. I, I left home at 13. And, and I lived in the wilderness, basically, you know, with no electricity, running water, moccasins on my feet, you know, an ax, <laughs> you know, this kind of thing, right? Hardcore. And, yeah. And so I didn't really have a high school experience, the normal high school experience. And I certainly didn't have a college or university experience. I didn't have any of that. So I didn't, under, I didn't get to learn the social dynamics of you know, who's in, who's cool, who hangs out with these people, who goes to the prom, this kind of stuff, right? I didn't get all that kind of social instruction when I was young. So I came out of the forest at 18, 19 years old into the cities of the world, which are like overwhelming for me. Yep. And I was completely, I had no social education. So my education that I had, as it were, to understand the, the d- dynamics of men and women was from movies. Yep. And you know that romantic comedy movies, you know, it's like he's the nice guy, gets the girl in the end. And just, so I was the quintessential nice guy. Yep. I was in, you know, in my, in my 20s, I was fundamentally broken and alone and miserable and frustrated and laying in my bed and looking up to the ceiling and wondering why, what, what, you know, and I was ashamed because I had, I was, I came from poverty and I was ashamed because I had no education, zero. So everybody else had this education or they had a nice apartment or they had a nice car and I had to scrabble for every minute of it or every bit of it. And so there's a large part of me that was ashamed of it. So my 20s, I was insecure, massively insecure, um, to the point of real needy, clingy type of energy. I was the one that was always like, you know, writing poetry and trying to be there for her. You know? <laughs> You know, the whole thing and women are like, okay, whatever. See you later, loser. But what I did is I did this. I would go out into the nightlife in my 20s by myself, um, leaning against the bar, trying to look cool. I'm not going to try and smile or anything because I, I thought you have to look cool, right? There's no, Gotta be this, is, this is before any of the dating scene <laughs> out there or dating instruction. It's before the internet. Yep. And, and so back then you had to go and, and, get a girl's phone number. You could, there was no, there was no social media phones, you know, to add on. You had to get her phone. You had to get up your nerve to go and get a piece of paper or memorize her phone number. (laughs) That was the only way to get in contact with her in the future. Yeah. So uh, my twenties was just a real morass of confusion and tears and, and suckiness. I was just really needy. And then my thirties, cause I, 
because I, I said, I'm going to figure this out. If other guys can do it, I'm going to figure it out no matter what. And so I just kept going and I, and I did my 10,000 hours, you know, the 10,000 hours to make you an expert. Anything. I've been out into bars and clubs and that social scene at more than 10,000 hours. Yeah. And so I did that. And then in my thirties, I started to get some ching, 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 aha moments. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I just said this to this girl and she said this back to me, but I've heard that 50 times before. And I think it means something else than what I, than the surface, what it, looks like. So I started to get these light bulb moments. I started to get some interactions, some understanding. In my 30s, I really started to, to, to keep understanding or, or, or to grow my understanding. And some guy asked me recently, man, when you're 20s and you know, early 30s, when you were getting rejected constantly and you, and you were all alone, did you ever think of giving up and just say it's not worth it? And, and, and it was shocked me. I wait, did I ever think that? No, because I have to figure it out. So I kept going. And in my 30s, I started to understand and get it. By the time I was 40, I really had, I, I did another 10 years in my 30, from 30 to 40. Wow. Understanding, learning. And so when I turned around 40 is when the internet dating scene took off, the seduction community, quote unquote. And so I was involved yeah. in the early conversations there. Back in the day, Neil Strauss wrote a chapter about me in the book, The Game, you know, way back then. And, um, and I had... I, I had a lot of stuff that I was understanding and wait a minute, maybe it's this and maybe it's that, maybe it's that, which was not instructed down from anybody except for my own experience. Right. Starting from scratch and, and kind of building yeah, as you go. So, yeah. so from 40 to 50, I hit the road. I quit my corporate job. I hit the road and I said, I have to, I have to understand this. And I wrote the book, The Alabaster Girl. It took me 10 years to write basically from birthday 40 to birthday 50. That's a publisher on my 50th birthday. Yeah. 10 years, man. It took me to write it. And in that 10 years, as I was writing it, so I was writing, you know, what I had learned, but I was also massaging and articulating and, and tuning up the message for that 10 years as I'm writing it. Yeah. So I traveled the world for 10 years. I was, I was in everywhere from South Africa to Panama to Colombia, where you are. And I put this into the book, The Alabaster Girl. And when I, when, when I published it on my 50th birthday, you know, it's strange because I th I, you, you think that you, you accomplish something that's a life goal of yours. And you think it's like, yeah, Stanley Cup moment, you know, it's like, rah, rah, rah. But I had no celebration in me. I just felt like it was done and put away and like, okay, that subject's done. I'm done with that conversation. Yeah. So, and, you know, and, and since then I'm, I'm working on a second book, but that's kind of my story in a nutshell. But the other p parallel layer, just for guys who don't understand, that was my understanding with women and the dynamic of men and women. And the parallel there was my, was my career level. So like I came with no education. I fast talked my way into a series of jobs. I trained myself in my evenings by just by reading, you know, books on how to be a, a programmer. I'm a computer nerd and uh, various things until I was very high in a company. I was like a senior guy, yeah. you know, in a, in a, with a corner office in a, in, a, in a corporation that I would still be there. And, but I, I, I spent my years looking at it thinking, this isn't my heart, my spirit. I've got this wild heart, you know, I was sneaking through the force as a kid and, and now I'm stuck here in this box of corporations. So, so I basically, uh, scared me completely fundamentally scared me. I quit that great secure job and went into nothing. That's very quickly my story on both sides. I resonate a lot with your story, even though my story is completely different. I, uh, so mine is totally at the opposite. I was raised, you know, I'm in, I live in Switzerland, so it was kind of a, a good education. Everything was cool, but I was a kid that was left alone by himself for his entire, uh, until, my, until my 12 years old. I was fat, I was not very social, and I came from a different country. So my origins were different. So I felt exactly the same as you felt in the woods, to be honest. But I, had, I gotta say thank you, because guys like you laid the path for my generation. So I'm 24 years old, and thanks to your 10,000 hours put in field, I was able to get out of it much more faster. I, so I took the route of uh, going in two ways. I thought that because I was not very cool, as you said, I wanted to be cool, so I started to play sports. I started to be a soccer player. But that was so important for me, because it was all my status that I did only that. And of course, I had stuff. Studies. So I did those two things and so I had zero social education. I had zero social interactions because it was school and training and nothing else and that was how I thought my life would be, you know, if I wanted to be cool. So until I was a, 
about the same age, 20. I had very few social interactions. I never went to a cl club actually before my 22nd birthday. And so you can see that within a couple months, thanks to guys like you and my own mentors, Josiah Price and Duke Delate, I was able to do exactly what you did for the same reason as you said, which is you said you never gave up, right? There was never a time when you said, yeah, I, I have to figure it out. I have to do something. And I remember on my first uh, boot camp that I joined, and it was out of despair, to be honest, uh, I went into Ibiza for uh, seven days and I was there only with guys that uh, were 30, 35 years old. And they were, you know, I thought they had a status, a good job, a lot of money. They were good looking. One of the guys was like, women would just look at him and be like, oh, please take me home. And I was just, you know, the, the young kid there. But the only thing that I had that these guys didn't is that I never gave up. We had those challenges when you have to go for, you know, uh, 200 approaches, 100 approaches or something like that. And I would never, never give up because I, I was so deeply attached to this idea of growing that you know thanks to guys like you and those that were able to lay the plan the, the yeah the blueprint of uh, of natural seduction that went much faster but in some in some sense i really you know it's uh, it feels the same being this nice guy being these guys that that thinks out of the movies writing the poems something i did when i was 16 <laughs> totally totally <laughs> amazing i didn't hear that story before but that's very, you know, compelling to me. You know, I was in, I was in Zurich, Switzerland, uh, a couple of years ago, and, and a good friend of mine there, he was 25 at the time, he said this. Uh, he said, you know what, Zan? And we're sitting around in his apartment, you know, hanging, relaxing. He said, I have to say this to you. You know, they don't make them like you anymore. You know, you're one of a kind. You, or you, they don't make them like you anymore. And I'm like, oh, that was a nice compliment, you know? Yeah. And he goes, no, listen to what I'm saying. It's not possible for somebody to be born on this earth and go through the experience you went through because of the internet. Yeah. You know, there's so much instruction and PDFs and YouTube and Tinder and online dating. He said, so you're kind of the last of that breed of like, you know, the old school, like trying to figure it out analog, you know? Yeah. And I thought, wow, this, that's interesting. It's true. Like nobody, you're, you're 24, you said? Yeah. So, so you 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 came into the scene never having to, to understand or go through the things that we had to way back in the day, and and it's not going to change, right? The digital world is here, and like online dating and you know which are things that we never experienced back then are the real thing nowadays. That's absolutely true. What I did though was that, that I cut myself out of all social media. I didn't have social media until I was in my 20s. So that's also why I like and I resonate with stories of kind of older people because it's for me it's all about mindset, about how you think and about how you present yourself. If you believe in yourself, it's going to happen at some point. And I see so many of our clients literally there are so many more guys that are younger that come to us and if they don't get results after 1 month, 2 month, they give up. They give up and they say, oh, it's not for me. I'll better hire a guy that, you know, swipes for me on Tinder and something is going to happen that way. And that's, that's just totally bullshit when you can change your life within, you know, nowadays, especially that's a shame because you can do as I did within a couple of weeks or something already get a huge transformation because we all, we already have those guys that did the first steps for us. We're literally just walking in the steps of our mentors. You yeah. did, you ran the four minute mile like Roger Bannister did and broke the belief barriers. <laughs> now everybody breaks it, huh? Yeah. Everybody's yeah. like, I can do it too. I, I wanna I wanna you know we have we have clients in our that come to us for coaching from every different age category and walk of life. Now I want to talk to the older guys. What message do you have to those older guys with uh, the sense of like, it's not too late. You really mastered this at an older age. You didn't like master it in your early twenties. You really toiled and just grinded it out until you were, <laughs> let's, let's face it, a master at this stuff. Older guys, like somebody who's like 30 and up, they, they really understand what I'm trying to say, maybe 35 and up, because they've had their heart broken a couple of times maybe. They've, 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 they've created a business or they've created some kind of like career path. They've changed that, tried something else. And, and so they really resonate with the kind of things I'm talking about because, because it's, a, it's, more, it's, a, it's a different plane that I'm speaking on, you know? 
it's not like a, you know, it's not, it's not pickup, as you said earlier. It's not that at all. It's not how to go to the mall and run around and bother girls, you know. It's not like that at all. It's like how to have this inviting spirit, this, this presence, this, this, this energetic danger spirit so that you're a force of nature, so that people are drawn into it. You know, like, like my theory is that some people are planets and some people are satellites, you know. Yep. Most people are satellites. They circulate around others. And how to become that planet so people circulate around you. And I always talk about a sense of abundance, you know, a man having a sense of abundance. We think, well, that's abundance because you have all the women in the world. No, it's because the women that you have known and who are in your life adore you and care about you. Your exes, you know, speak highly of you. Mm-hmm. And the women that, that, that are in your life, they, 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 they want to be in your presence because you represent something that's an escape from the normal, right? So it's an incredible thing. So what we're talking about is if you have this energetic, mystical way of looking at your life and you want to create your life as a, as a, as a piece of art, then everybody, men and women, will be drawn into the, into the, into the, into the uh, orbit of that, you know? So the first thing out of my mouth when I talk to a girl... 21 year old girl, 22 is my age. What am I going to do with you, girl? Hey, you know, because if here's a little quick tip for guys who are older. If you skirt the issue and she has to ask you, well, wait a minute, how old are you, by the way? Okay. Oh. And you make some kind of joke, you failed. You've lost it, you failed, you failed. The first thing out of your mouth, because women don't really care your age, they care if you care about it. You know, so if you change that perspective instead of like, well, I'm too old for this girl. She's mm-hmm. 21 years old and uh, she's not going to be interested in me. I promise you that's not true. The older I get, the more younger women are interested as long as you have this complete ownership of it. Yeah. And, and so instead of that perspective of she's not going to like me or I have to hide the fact that I'm this age or I have to like dress young and all this kind of stuff, right? Instead... Instead, you change the perspective, which is a true perspective of, I've seen some things in this world. I've traveled. I've started a business or two. I've been here and there. What can you, 21-year-old girl, offer me? What, what, what's something new that you can teach to me? And when you have that spirit, which is a kind spirit, which is a respectful spirit, which is an inviting spirit, Giving, yeah. um, women, 21-year-old girls go, wait a minute, I'll show you. Uh, you know. So it's a, it's a change. And I promise you, if guys would just embrace the rage and say, say immediately, the first thing out of my mouth is like, hey, what am I going to do with you? I'm, I'm old enough to be your father. Go away. Wait a minute. Come here. You know? When you have that spirit, women immediately, it's not a problem for them at all. You're pointing to a really big concept in your book that really transforms your perspective when you're interacting with women, which is the do I like her versus does she like me, right? When you come up and you're not yeah. owning your age, you're like, does she like me? Am I too old for her, right? And instead of really putting your yeah. focus on her and experiencing her and being curious, because a lot of nice guys think that it's uh, mean or rude to say, what do you have to offer me? But that's actually giving in the energy of it, right? Can you, can you talk about why? Yeah, yeah. And you're, not, you're not really saying it like in some kind of a challenge. Remember, yeah. you're, you're sweet. Yeah. You're full of life. You love life. You love girls. You love this girl that's talking to you. Yeah, I, I like the energy of it. This is for me. Everything's for me, you know? Yeah. It's like the king going through his kingdom. Imagine that. He walks through his kingdom and he sees this girl he's never seen before. What would a king do? Would he get up his nerve, go talk to her? Would he, would he like uh, try and find an excuse to get in? He would say, excuse me, part, he would part the people and say, listen, I, I haven't seen you in my kingdom before and I would like to know you and, or I'd like to see you and, and who are you? And tell me something about you. You see, that's a, that's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a kindness in that that isn't challenging. I'm not challenging in any way. So it's the same thing as like, not what can you offer me instead of that's in your spirit and your heart as you're speaking to her. Um, I've seen some things. You're not really saying this necessarily, but it's from, it's from your eyes, from your demeanor, from your spirit. I've seen some things. Who is this young girl and what can you teach me, my dear? I would love to know. And they can feel that. Yeah, it's literally welcoming her in your own adventure. Yeah. Yeah, it's curiosity over challenging or being... 100%. Because they can exactly. feel that. It really affects a woman when you're genuinely curious. And it's impossible to be curious about something and self-conscious about yourself, right? So even for the guys out there that are constantly 
thinking, what, what do That's I do, correct. what do I say? Instead, just if you put, and you say this in your book a lot, if you put your full focus on her and genuinely being interested and curious about what she has to offer you, what she's been through, um, that coupled with your wisdom, uh, because as men, we're very fortunate to age like fine wine. Our value increases over time, <laughs> right? Um, is, is, it's addictive for women. It really is. You know, I've had women that I've dated who have literally told me the way that you look at me, you know, just the way you look at me just opens me up and, and makes me want to just talk to you all night. You know, it's, it's alluring yeah, that's and that's seduction versus the manipulative yeah. kind of pickup stuff of wanting to get something from her. It's wanting to give because, you know, giving is living. The that's more correct. you give, the more you get back. I always say that seduction is all in the unspoken. So whether it's when you're talking, what is in between the lines, what you imply, what is, what is assumed, what is, you know, it, all, all these looks, these, just a gesture, uh, just a movement. Same, it's very similar to how girls actually seduce. I think when you get to the same level as they do, which is a lot of this uh, feminine, actually feminine energy, when you are very fluent and fluid, then magic starts to happen. Yeah, it's like, you know, like any great musician. I read uh, the autobiography of um, Keith Richards mm -hmm. and you look at Chopin, you know, and, and, and these different composers of that, they all had the same feeling, which is the, what makes the music really come alive is, this, is, the, is the tension and the spaces between the notes. Yeah. You have to have that. If it doesn't have that, it's just like, you can, technically you can play musical notes one after the other, but it's the tension, it's, it's the silences, it's the, the edge of anticipation. And this is the whole thing with the dynamic of men and women, to sit in tension and to, have, to, to be able to, to, you know, you're waiting for resolution. When you're listening to a song, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. And when it doesn't finish, something twinges in your heart here. You feel like, uh, 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 it's, you know, you're waiting for resolution for it to go home. Yeah. which is a metaphor for all of us. We're ready to, we're wanting to go back home to where it's going to be okay, you know? And when you don't, and when you have that tension in, in, in a conversation with women, it's fantastic. So it's like sitting in tension, like you said, um, keeping that, that spaces and the, and the energy in between, in between the notes, incredible. It's a dance. It's absolutely yes. a dance versus, you know, pick up, which is like, basically it's a competition. It's, it's this kind of, I have to, even if I'm not, I have to pretend I'm this high value man. And it's that inherent belief that you're not, but every, every man has value. Every man has gifts to give to the world. And I, you know, I love stories like yours because there was great suffering and it's like through your great suffering and your, your journey, you've opened up the door for so many other men to alleviate their suffering. Cause let's face it, living in a world with so much beauty, with the inability to access it is, one of the most tragic things I think that you can experience uh, emotionally uh, and sp even spiritually, right? I also think how you, how you compare seduction and love to tragedy, to, to, to passion, right? That, that has, if you, if you look at every social interaction like that, you cannot be wrong. Like we mentioned music, we mentioned dancing. That's also how I got into this mindset of, oh, this is actually seduction. This is how it's supposed to be, is when I read, I think, it was a quote or a mis, mis, misinterpreted quote of, uh, of yours that said something like that, that seduction is like an art, like when you have this passion looking at the tragedy. And then I took dance classes and that's exactly where I understood what we're saying, that it's all in the, in, in the nuances, in what you don't see, in, in, in the, the thing that if you just look at it, you think it's the legs that do the movement, but in fact, it's the head, it's the, it's the upper body. And in, the, in seduction in women, it's, the, it's exactly the same thing because art is actually very similar to sex in some sense. We also want to paint, you know, this, this beautiful piece of art. So when you translate that to just the interaction and she's, she doesn't expect it, then guess who is, you know, <laughs> surprising. I mean, for me, I, the first book I read on this topic was The Art of Seduction and such a long book, but I could not put it down all these stories. And it's, it's a little similar to your book in terms of like the stories that it tells and you pick up yeah. that feeling. And then I went right into the pickup stuff because I was so new and I didn't really know too much. 
And I mean, I was getting results with that, but it wasn't really until I started learning more of the seduction, more of the energy, more of the dance that it really became satisfying ver uh, beyond a one night stand. That the sex, you know, that, that, uh, finishing of the tension was so much deeper and, and, and literally spiritual. It was, it really awoken me to the beauty of life of just even walking down the street and knowing I don't have to approach every single woman I see just because she's beautiful. I can have enjoyment just really appreciating her beauty, which puts you in such a high vibration. It puts you in such a deep gratitude and happiness for life because a woman, I mean, is God's greatest gift to man. <laughs> That's right. And it makes you believe in good. Like I asked you recently, actually, he said, you know, what do you do with sadness? I have sadness in my heart. And, and I contemplated on that. And we all have sadness, you know? Like, you know, like uh, Adam and Eve were told, you know, you're going to be cast out of the garden and your life is going to be full of sorrow. <laughs> your your future is going to be sorrow, right? And it's like the sadness is there. And it's not going away, but it's become something that it, it, but sadness is a component of beauty. That's why beauty has, has, is beautiful because it, it contains all of the human experience, including sadness, you know, and, and we think we have to be cool and know the right thing to say, but we don't connect because we're cool because girls aren't cool either. We connect in our brokenness. We connect in our, in our, in our desire to be seen and to, and when we become uh, the word is vulnerable, but we think vulnerable is a bad word, but it's authentic, you know, to say, you know, you know, yeah, so. Yeah, that's true. I have seen so many people using manipulation to, to, to succeed in seduction and that works because there is always someone that wants to be manipulated at the end of the day, right? So there is a synergy that can happen in all different levels of consciousness. And awareness. You, you think of it like this, like you could learn, men, I set out when I was in my 20s to become this great seducer. Some somebody in the media called me back there in, in a TV show or a TV news. They did a lifestyle segment on me. Zan is the world's greatest seducer. And and you think you know is you could learn the t how to be a seducer by doing fast talking or like the way to say certain things or. But what you learn over the years is plain speaking is the most incredible thing you can do. Just to speak it plain and say you know what I don't know you, and I just met you and I would like to see you again. I like you and I don't know why I like you, but I would like to explore that, you know, that's fantastic. That's got wheels. And, and so it's like, it's, we set out in, you, you can become this manipulator by learning quote unquote, how to talk and how to wheel and this kind of stuff. Or you can, you become, you know, get a bunch of money in a yacht and a Ferrari and women in bikinis will glom onto you, you know, but it, it, at the end of it, even those guys, and I've coached guys like this who are saying, well, I, you know, I'm in the, in, in, in the club here in New York City, and I'm got, I've got the, the crystal bottles holding up in the air like this, and the girls come to my table, and, and they're all around, and when the lights come on, the girls dissipate and it's gone, and I go back to my penthouse alone. And so you think, you know, what is the measure of a man? What is, what's the point of it? If you're not, if you're not adored, if, you're not, if you don't have devotion, we can get girls, we can get the bikini girls around us, right? By different things. We can get laid. But if you don't have that real kind devotion that cares about you and really, really wants you to succeed, wants to inspire you, then that's what we're hungry for. And that's what we're missing. And that's, you know, and then what's the point, you know? It's the big difference, you know? Because yeah, that stuff can be empty. You have a lot of pickup artists that have all these women around them and they get really, really, really depressed. I mean, that happened to Neil Strauss. He's went through bouts yeah. of depression when he had veritably all the material stuff around him, but it's really that feeling, that sense, that connection. And you can have, you can have sex and not have any connection whatsoever, even though it's inherently physically connected, it, it's mostly mutual yeah. masturbation, really, when there's no connection, when there's no feeling, when there's no warmth and, and reciprocation. Yeah. yeah, and that's why, you know, pornography, for instance, is, is, is everywhere, per pervasive. Mm -hmm. But when you, you're, you turn off the, the pornography, they, then you see reflected in the screen your face. It's just mm -hmm. you, you know? And what we're longing for, what men are longing for, they don't, may not know it. They think they want to get laid. They want to get a supermodel. They want all these things. This is what they think they want. But what they really fundamentally want 
is to have the, the concept of the beloved, yeah. you know? They want the yeah. beloved. Someone, when they look into the, into, into the face and to look at her smile and they get the, that, that feeling, you know? This is, this is like looking at a horizon or, a, or a, a, the Grand Canyon or a painting. It imbues you, it, it fills you with, with inspiration, with music, with everything. And we're longing for that. We're longing for it to look into the face of the beloved and her face, you know, you know looking back in adoration. <laughs> Instead, we're, you imagine this, in all of history, in all the cultures of all of history, the men have been doing their battles, building bridges, uh, doing all this kind of stuff, and the women are trying to get their attention. Yeah. And now we're trying to get the women's attention on Tinder. Yeah. Like, you know, like, uh, yes. so what can I do to get her? We're trying to get the attention of the girls, which is completely opposite of what it's ever been. And, and, and we're trying to supplicate and do all the kind of stuff to get their attention on us. And all of history has been the other way around. The women are like, uh, don't forget us when you go, you know, please come back to me, you know? And yeah. it's like, it's some, it, it, and now we're, th the roles have changed and we're this like sucky supplicant that's like crawling on our knees, doing everything we can just to get noticed on Tinder in real life. They, it's like, they're the ones that bat you away and you know, it's like something's upside down. And we can feel it in our hearts. It's like, wait a minute. You know, it's the growing pains of this technological advancement that we have in society that's creating more distance, right? Between people, well, yeah. ironically. Um, so guys, I really want to recommend uh, Zan's book, The Alabaster Girl. <laughs> um, he's got a copy too. <laughs> <laughs> David, you're the odd one out. Um, it's what I what I love about this. Get you What I love about this book is it's not a, um, an instructional step by step process to become the ultimate seducer. When you read this book, you kind of instill the vibration of being the lover, being the seducer, um, having those. It's like vibrational dance lessons. <laughs> if, I could, if I could describe it uh, as accurately from my experience as possible. So I was going to say, Jules, that, you know, like when I started to write the book, I started to write, what is the, who, who's writing, who's speaking, who, who are they speaking to? And I thought maybe it's an older man speaking to a younger man, yeah. right? My younger self, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. Lessons I wish I would have learned. The problem is, you know, because you, technology comes along and things change so fast that w what you might say you, somebody who is like 60 or 70 years old trying to teach a young guy nowadays, well, just go to church, son, right? It doesn't work. It's like, it's like the society's moved on from what he used to do. Yeah. Right? So I had to have a time agnostic. Timeless. And then and I, and I started to write something to men and I couldn't get the tone right. So I switched it to writing it to women. So the book is really written, written. <laughs> the book is really written um, from a man to women. Yeah and telling the women why they respond to him in ways they don't respond to other men. This is why, this is what I've learned and this is what you say you, you, say you want and say you do, but here's what you really say or really want and really do. So he's teaching women about the heart of women. <laughs> Imagine that, how presumptuous is that? Um, and other men can listen in the conversation. That's, that's the tone of it. Yeah. Um, it's, and, 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 I, and I erased and I, and I, was, I, I did it my best to, to scrape out anything that felt like self-help yeah, you know, there's enough of that out there. My second book, man, I'm struggling with it because it's it's a furtherance of this book, but it's not about the dynamics of men and women. It's more about a life well lived, a life of relevance. Yeah, you know what is art and science and stuff like that. And that's uh, I'm I'm struggling with it, but it's fascinating. And if I get it done, I'll be very very happy. Well, I will get it done. Um, I just want to read a quote um, from the book and then guys there's gonna be a link in the description below on how you can get yourself a copy um, and then you said you had a um, an offer as well to give a free book away that was signed yeah. by you yeah well, you can put the link it's alabastergirl.com and basically I have I just finished printing another 4,000 books here in Romania I printed 4,000 before and 2,000 before that and I give them away as gifts to anybody who, who writes in and onto that uh, alabastergirl.com. They just have to pay for the shipping and the cost of the book, basically, which is 10 bucks. And then I, I sign it. I sign every one. I've signed like thousands of books by hand. And I send it out. We send it on the mail. And, um, and you get a copy in, in hopefully in a few weeks or a couple of weeks.
So if anybody's interested in getting a signed copy, here's one of them. I'll sign it and send it to you. And um, yeah. This is a quote from the book, and it's very powerful. A boy looks for all the ways that he can impress a girl. We were talking about this. A man looks for all the ways that she can impress him. A boy seeks to maximize the way he appears in her eyes. A man seeks to maximize the way she appears in his eyes. A boy wonders what she thinks of him. A man wonders what he thinks of her. A boy asks himself, where is she on a scale of one to 10? A man asks himself, what is beautiful about this woman before me? A boy asks himself over and over, does she like me, does she like me? A man asks himself over and over, do I like her, do I like her? A boy is in his head. A man is in his heart. A boy observes himself, a man observes her, going into the part of you know being actually genuinely curious about her. And I've read just that passage many, many times to really internalize it and make it mine. And um, it really brings you into the feeling. I mean, this, this one little piece right here alone can absolutely change the way you interact with the opposite sex, but this book is filled with gems, guys. I really highly recommend uh, getting it. Do not That's very kind, very nicely to say. Thank you for that. I dumped, I, I dumped my body and my soul and my, my whole experience, my, and, and when I, you know, it's been five years since I wrote that book, since I published it, and, and there's nothing, like it's something put away for me, it's weird because there's nothing in the last five years that I thought, oh, I wish I was in, that would have been in the book too. Yeah. It's like, it's like something vomited out of my system and, and it's done. And I'm, I'm, I'm only curious about this next book I'm trying to write, which I'm super excited I'm for. Excited. I'm excited about that. I, bet, I ask you all the time, how's the book coming? Man? I know, I know. <laughs> Me too. I'm like, ah. uh, it, it, it'll, it'll happen perfectly. And it's going to yeah. be the same where you're not going to leave uh, any stone unturned. So I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, man. Yeah. I appreciate you being on the show. Yeah, I'm happy to be here, guys, and good work, you know? Hey, guys, um, if, you, if you're inspired by this, uh, if you want to really learn how to be in the energy and the vibration of beauty and, and gratitude and, and appreciate women and really connect and open yourself up, me and David are doing this incredible inner transformation program that not only helps you transform your beliefs with women, but with every area of your life and helps you lift off those emotions of fear and anxiety and insecurity uh, so that you can be fully alive, fully self-expressed and fully curious about the beautiful woman standing in front of you. The program's called Unshakable, and if, if it inspired you, we have a link in the description below to book a call with uh, my elite team of coaches to, to see if you're ready for this, to see if you're a good fit, um, because we've got the ways that you can absolutely learn to open your heart to life, and especially those beautiful women you've always dreamed of. <laughs> so thanks for watching this segment of the Attractive Man podcast with our special guest, Zan Perion, and we will see you on the next one.